It's fine, you know. We just might do that. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, baby. Good. You tell me when. You're the director. Oh, okay. okay. Which one are we looking at? This one. Uh, this one. That one. Hey guys, this is Bruce, and uh, I have the honor of being with a PCI professional, my friend James. I'm gonna ask him some questions. Like this is gonna be experience for both of us, for you guys, and for me, because I've been wanting to know about PCI compliance for a really long time, and this is a really cool opportunity for me as like a security geek. But uh, so James, like, could you tell us real quickly, like, what do you do? Sure thing. Um, so right now I'm the lead engineer and kind of the architect for um, my company in developing PCI compliant technical solutions to various problems that arise from um, payment industry. Mm. So now that, that goes right into our next question, which is what is PCI? So PCI stands for Payment Card Industry, and it's a, um, a group of regulations that are constantly being put out by Visa, MasterCard, Amex, and Europay, I think Bank of, Bank of Japan as well. So they w will have these standards for, okay, if you're going to accept any sort of credit card transactions, debit card transactions, to be able to do that and to have a good rate because you have to pay these companies to process these transactions. Um, you have to be PCI compliant. So th they have several different standards out there which um, depending on your situation you might have to abide by to be able to accept and process payment transactions. And this can affect everyone from a retailer such as Target um, or a bank such as Bank of America or um, a processor who's in the back end or Visa, MasterCard, they all have to play by these rules and they have to um, ensure that they are constantly in compliance. And these regulations are constantly changing and being updated. Wow, so this is actually brings up a real interesting question. What do you think about all of the, the compliance? Target, for example, Target had a breach where a lot of, they lost a bunch of records, if you guys didn't know. Um, and there's been a couple of other ones that Target really comes to mind though. Like what, as an industry professional doing security, PCI compliance, what do you think when you see something like that in the news? You know, a lot of times it makes me think about how well evaluated they were. Because uh, the way how it usually works is you have to have a third party come and evaluate Audit. you to make right. sure that you're actually up to these standards now how stringent was this evaluation? Like, did they just show the regulator what they wanted to see, right. or was, or did they have a really stringent audit? Or did they, or were they in the, in the process of remediating something that they had the auditor found? You know, how fast were they trying to do that? Because a lot of times the business side of the house is gonna have problems with the IT security part of the house because IT security can sometimes slow down business, right. new and products. And more money too, yes. stuff like that. Yes. So I think with a lot of these breaches that are coming out, I think we're seeing more and more that these organizations that are pro probably taking our most important data, the very data that we have that for the our, our livelihoods, they need to be audited stringently and it can't just show auditors what they what what they plan to do or they have to auditors have to dig dig deep down and they have to be prepared so i think that's the the big things that need to happen happen if we're going to continue to secure like our whole entire ecosystem right right so is it if is it anything like risk management where you have an inside um audit and then you have an outside third party auditor come in so that they, they're not, in, they're a disinterested party, meaning they don't care if you win or lose, they don't care, care if you pass or fail. They come in off the street and then they look at it for what it is and they either pass you or they fail you. Is it kind of like that with PCI? Yeah, I would say it's, it's very much like that. You're going to have an internal group of people and their job is going to be to try to you know, they're going to be negotiating with the auditors. They're going to be trying to lead the charge for a lot of the internal initiatives that an auditor might identify and to bring them to a remediation. But then you're also going to have that third party that's disinterested, which I'm a little bit skeptical because those companies are hoping to get return business because they get paid to come on site. Right. 
Right. So if they are too like stringent and make it too unpleasant for the business, they kind of have this incentive not to be too gotcha. harsh. So in the government, what they'll do is they th there's no incentive for these guys to do uh, to be to not find flaws. In fact, there's more incentive to find flaws. So it, it's almost like they they go the extra mile to find something. Mm -hmm. So and it's I think that that's actually good because it forces you, the the person actually putting in the security controls, to go that much further to 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 make it more fortified. So yeah, that's that's an interesting. I didn't, I didn't think of that. I mean, it, it could also be an impact too, because you have contracting companies for the federal government as well. Right. You know, they are de dependent on this repeat business with the federal government. So, you know, they are going to there's they are going to push to find things. They, they are both sides, both the PC auditors and the government auditors. But you know, it, it's a kind of a let's say it's kind of this. We have strange incentives in place gotcha. for a lot of these companies to work and operate. Gotcha. Okay, another question for you. So I want to know if PCI is anything like risk management framework. So in risk management framework, one of the first things you do is you have to assess the security level, the category of that system that you're looking at. Like you have an asset and it's maybe, I don't know, processing um, telemetry for some satellite or something like that, right? In okay. theory. So you have to see if it, what kind of important data it is and that determines what level of security controls you put on the system. And then the next step is to put those security controls on the system. And then after that, you have somebody assess the system to see if all the controls are in place. And then finally, you have somebody to approve the security controls in place. Last step is actually to do ongoing security. Is it anything like that? You got the same kind of processes? In place? Yeah, so, the, so there is, there is, of course, this division of roles like you're describing the risk management framework, and there is a need for you to have documentation, significant documentation, right, right. regarding what's there, what's actually happening, where where is the information being stored at, right. is it valuable information, is there something that you can quote de-scope, which means, okay, this part here is not really at risk for, right. a, for a PCI. So you try to identify where the problems are, and then you have to decide, okay, how can we remediate this? Is it feasible to remediate this problem? Right. And then that's going to be an ongoing process and you have to constantly recertify your PCI compliance. And so you have an incentive to, con to constantly improve because you want to be better the next time your auditor comes in. Right. Because they're going to give you a score, more yeah. or less. They're going to give you like a, say, okay, do they meet the standard? Do they have, do they, are they below the standard but they're making remediations or did they fail? That's usually how it, get, it gets broken down. All right. So another question for you, kind of for the audience out there. We get a lot of people who um, are new to this field. They want to get into the field. So as somebody who's been in the field for a while, what, what was, would be the first step you'd say for somebody who's maybe done a little bit of IT or let's say, Let's even take it a step further. They've never done any IT, but they want to get into PCI. What would you okay. say their first step should be? So if they have never been in IT before, I, I would say that be the first the first place you just start is with the IT fundamentals. Not understanding how networking, what networking works. There's tons of certifications for that. Take a security plus exam. You know, just get the basics down of what it is, because this is all going to be about IT. Even if you're not an engineer, you're still going to have to understand What's a server? What's a database? How what how do like how do networks work? You're gonna to have to have at least at least the cursory knowledge to kind of understand those things. But if you want to kind of develop more on the PCI route, um, I would say there's several certifications. Most of them are going to be geared to people that are already in the industry, but there is um, one or two. Um, I can't remember their exact name, but there's an entry level certification for people that are technical that want to know more about the PCI. But you don't even have to go the certification route. The, all these materials, all these standards by PCI are published. You can go, you can look at the, the data security standards, you can read every single one. That, and that's honestly when I was um, really much more green in my career, I actually would study the standards that I, was applicable to me to make sure I understood them. Um, and 
they're not really that hard. I mean, to really read through, you, you would, it would be helpful to have IT knowledge, but you really could just read through the standards and under, try to understand <laughs> those. I mean, you can say it's going to, it's going to have very general platitudes like you will, you need to have multi-factor authentication to enter a data a system that has credit card information. Right. Something very general like that. It doesn't have to tell you how to do it. It's not going to be super prescriptive, but it's going to tell you this. So if you can study that, you, you'll be able to do it. And you can find, we can probably post links to where this, sure. these documents resides. Like the, so there's a couple of different standards out there. You have um, PCI DSS, which is kind of like, if you're anything in the financial world, you have to have PCI DSS certification. But if you get, then there's some more specific ones revolving around debit cards, like PCI PIN, where wow. you have to, which are a lot more drilled down, a lot more specific that you can learn about too. Wow, that's really interesting. I didn't know that there were different kinds of PCI. <laughs> oh, yeah, and you know, your scope depends on what kind of business you are. You have a small business that might have some very limited PCI involvement, but for the most part, your main involvement is going to be when you are in the, when you're in a big company that's in the financial markets. So my next question is: uh, Is it would you say it was a difficult field to get into? Um, for me, I, I it took it took some work to get into. Really, it did. Um, what was your background before you got into PCI? So actually, I wasn't even like a computer science person. I had a degree in economics. I was doing data analysis, and I was actually working in credit card fraud to try to use data analysis to capture credit card criminals. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> I was doing that. You were on the other side. You were yeah. on the financial side. I was on the back end side. You know, if I would look and see all these transactions that would be coming across and I'd be like, okay, these people steal a credit card and within 10 minutes they're wow. like 30 miles away and they're spending $2,000 on Nike shoes, you know, right. whatever it is. Wow, and that's interesting. So yeah. I would see the trends and I would try to develop rules that would try to combat that, but yeah. I, you know, it was the same time when Home Depot and Target were all having their breaches. They were hit back so back. I, you know, it, I was like, man, this cybersecurity thing is really hot. I need to get in. So I happened to find a way to get into it um, at a, in, a, in a financial company. Wow, that's so incredible at how like there's so much cross between the IT field because I did um, um, cyber analysis where you're looking at uh, data not data well data breaches like people trying to break in or steal information not necessarily credit cards so it sounds like you were doing the same thing but for credit card fraud interesting is it would you say it was a solid field to get into PC knowing PCI and doing kind of the stuff that you do so if you're going to go try to go the technical route or the compliance route I think there's a lot of opportunity now and that's why I say it's it's, it's not impossible to get into and I think if you actually put the actual effort in and I mean actual studying every single day and you can demonstrate to somebody that you understand this stuff I think you have a better a good chance of, of landing a job like this because the skill set is so limited to there's not many people out there that are looking to learn this stuff exactly. but the, there are people that are constantly asking like whether you're on the auditor side whether or not you're on the internal compliance side whether or not you're an engineer all right. these things um, are, are in demand right now. So huge demand. So the faster you can start working on this stuff, the better opportunity you're going to have. And I would jump on it right now while, since we're having all these breaches and there's so much scrutiny now, the level the, the level of need has risen. Yes, I would say that there was a few things that employers usually look for on the risk management uh, framework side. They look for Usually look for a degree, like a bachelor's degree is what they're usually on the upper end. But you can you can probably get away with an associate's degree. But in some cases, sometimes they only look for a certification, right? You got to start somewhere. So a certification such as a Security Plus, having a background is huge. Having an IT background is, is huge. Um, but a Security Plus is a good certification to have. If you want to show basic networking skills, a uh, Network Plus, but even better would be like a Cisco certification if you can get one of those. Um, but yeah, I would say it was a certification, IT certification, a little bit of uh, IT background, like maybe even help desk or something like that, basic stuff. 
And then you have to know the compliance stuff. And if you actually have experience in compliance, that's even better. But if let's, let's say you're just coming off the street. Uh, certification, basic IT background, and we say there's anything else? Maybe a degree? No, the only thing I would say is that, in my experience, the people that are really good at this field are the people that are self-taught, who are motivated yeah, to learn. For sure. Not the people who, who just got a computer science degree. I can tell you, there's so many interns I have who computer science degrees don't know anything about what they've learned. So if you, if you actually put the effort in, and there's so many resources out there, that you can really um, get to a point of mastery that you would beat someone out of. Yes. Out of your university these days. And I absolutely agree with you. So many people with a degree, um, no offense, have no idea what they're doing. Um, and I would say with the, <laughs> with the certifications as well. Like people with certain, and I talked about this on another video, that I got a lot of hits where I talked about the CISSP, which I have. Just because nice. you have a, certif a CISSP doesn't mean you know anything. So he's right. Like if you know the, if you can be self-taught and know the stuff yourself, that's all the smartest. Let me put it to you this way: the smartest guys I know are all self-taught. Period, and they got a certification later, right? So I mean, that's it. Do you have any parting words for this audience? Uh, you know, just like good luck out there with uh, trying to find these jobs, and you know, hopefully while. We'll, you know, as me and Bruce um, have more and more time together in front of the camera, we, we can talk more about this stuff and, you know, to. we can help assist you guys with these kind of issues with getting into this career field. Absolutely. All right, guys, that's about it. If you have any questions, comment in the section below and um, like and subscribe to this video. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> wow, man. You're so wow. smooth with it, man. You should really... Yeah. Oh, sorry, this is your phone. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Sorry about that, that was a go. good interview.